This team's kind of stacked, actually. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Regis Sai, Royal Luck. They got a, a substitute. Both teams, I allowed both teams a last minute substitute because they both agreed to it. And it's for Regis Sai's team, it's uh, US Economy. And he's a little bit higher than his other his other member. So, uh, Regis right, Sai, Royal Luck. Are we good? They got a, a substitute. Both uh, teams, Sean? I allowed both teams a last minute substitute because they both agreed right, to cool. it. And it's yeah, we're good. For Regis Sai. <laughs> okay cool so ladies and gentlemen welcome this is the intro lol. first week of the playoffs this is the second day the first match of today my name is jose skeptic joe domek coming at you live here alongside me is going to be the one and only the mvp ashan a the star hamilton and as a surprise guest third uh, is going to be alongside with us is hacking you now also known as only how's it going guys yes hello guys How's it going, Sean? Uh, that was pretty incredible. So today we're just going to jump right into champ selecting our first match of the day. It is going to be a best of three between uh, Team Royal Luck on the blue side and on the red side is going to be uh, Krug Life, I believe. Uh, yeah, Krug Life on red life, uh, on red side. So we're going to be seeing overall the bands. What do you guys think? Pretty typical, right? Mundo, Yasuo, Jax, Soraka, Talon Kench. Either things that are really annoying or really just kind of broken in the meta. And I like the Rek'Sai first pick. Elise is also available, but Rek'Sai is a really strong jungler right now. How are you guys feeling about this? I agree with a lot of these bands that they have so far. I feel that Tam Ken and Soraka are pretty good for red side bands just because, you know, you get the option for blue team to first pick that. Although that calls into question why blue team wanted to ban Mundo and then first pick Rek'Sai. I'm not saying there's nothing bad with the Rek'Sai pick, but Mundo is pretty, pretty strong late game scaling champion in comparison to Rek'Sai. Hmm, I mean, what I can say, the only thing I can see right now is that I don't understand why they banned Zed. Like, like you said, they have first pick. Like, they could have just as easily just forced the purple team to, you know, I guess ban what they didn't want and just take advantage of this first because I think that overall the red side has the advantage in terms of pick and ban only because of the last one. Like, you could, you could kind of see, oh, you know, like blue side is going to pick the carries, which is, you know, the last two picks, whereas you can mm -hmm. kind of hold out on your last pick for red siding, I guess, either do a counter pick or a counter team comp pick or just screw around with them, you know? Definitely that last side pick on the, uh, that last rotation pick on the red side is a huge influence here. We're going to be seeing the Diana and the uh, Thresh lock-in. I'm already going to assume that's Diana mid just because for the most part, Runeglaive junglers are really struggling, especially in solo queue right now. They have less, overall, less than, uh, I believe a 50% win rate, right? Yeah, the and that's mentioned that if you were yeah. going to go Rune Glaive jungler, the only one I would suggest even going at in the moment is Elise, and even then, I don't think Rune Glaive would be the best first item on her. Not because I feel that isn't good for a damage up but because I feel you just don't need damage coming out of your jungler in this meta at the moment. You already have enough damage coming out of your side lanes, so I feel that you can just pick up a tank jungler, go that tank build path, get the lock in, just make sure that you're the front line that your team needs for the 5v5 fights. And see, here's a funny thing now. We have Malphite being hovered now. I told people yesterday that Malphite had 100% win rate in the games yesterday, and there were five games yesterday. He got picked in four of those five games. So this is a team that's trying to round that Malphite free low. Let's see if it can get them that free low for them. Uh, <clears throat> here's the thing, though. If you look at Purple Size Team Comp, the... If you want to play Malphite, then I don't think Vayne really fits that team comp. They have Thresh, which, which is good, you know, for picking people up. They have Diana to help corral the targets, and you know, you have, you know, you have Malphite with his ult, you know, and whatever Yolo he wants to do. But Vayne, I don't like the AC pick at all. You think something along the lines of a misfortune would have been better, especially now with a rework that she's a lot more of that wombo combo. Um, champion across the board and actually i was going to ask you guys about this mf pick because right now she's super strong but i haven't even gotten to play her i've never even played her pre-patch what's her deal right now why is she so good okay so the reason with misfortune being so strong right now is because her ulti got massively buffed we were talking 
two buffs where the first one increased the AD scaling on the ultimate, and then the second one, they increased the number of bullets per wave of the ultimate, so it just does an incredible amount of damage. Like, you know how in patch 5.22 we have Lucian's ultimate basically 100 to owing people early to mid game? Like, now Miss Fortress ultimate can basically do the same thing except to win a whole entire team. Wow. What about you, Alan? Have you been playing Mammoth? I know you're an ADC man. Yeah, I, I played her a couple of times, and I also, like, played versus her. I feel that uh, in terms of her, like, 1v1 potential is a little weaker in comparison to other AD carries, but her team fighting is very strong just because of her ulti. Like, her ulti basically zones an entire enemy team. It's pretty ridiculous in that regard. But there's one thing I like, though, about uh, Royal Lust composition is that since they knew they wanted to pick Misfortune, they picked up Braum because I feel that if you, a team has Misfortune, enemy team should look to pick up Braum because Braum's E can actually block her entire ulti in the midst of a team fight. So I think that was a very good pickup to get both of those champions on their side. What do you think? That, that's going to be a really strong... Uh, oh, across the board, I would say. This is a really strong early to mid-game team, team composition coming out from Royal Luck, especially with the level 11 Rumble power spike that is very infamous. Um, I'm going to expect them to be wanting to take fights around that Rift's... Uh, Rift's got alert, excuse me, Rift Herald, as well as the Dragons early on. Whereas on the side of Krug Life here on the red side, we do see the lock-in of the Lissandra. We saw it um, played by Flywalker, I believe, yesterday. Um, had some good moves, was able to get some picks uh, in, you know, with some Elise uh, assistance in the mid lane. But I suppose if you want to lock down uh, an MF during her ult, that's probably the oh best way God. to do it. It's funny because I actually got banned yesterday, too, after it got played in game one. Uh -huh. And uh, how do you feel about their whole overall composition? Because... We were talking about how these Broomblade Juggers are struggling right now, but they still opted to go for the Diana jungle pick anyway. Comfort pick. That's purely a comfort pick. How, how, okay, so in comparison between preseason and now, how would you say weaker is Diana, or it's just that everyone else is now so much more stronger that she's less effective at what she does? I feel that she's a champion that requires flanking to be very effective, and... If she, when she wants to flank too, she's also very snowball reliant in the sense that if you have the Diana that's even her behind, you feel like she's not doing enough damage. And then if it's snowballing, if she's snowballing, it's like, okay, you know, you're snowballing, you're really strong. But then it's like, who isn't strong in this game when they're insanely ahead? So I feel that in terms of the reliability of the pick isn't as great compared to other picks. I felt that, you know, right now with the junglers that are open still, it would have been better to pick up Elise if you wanted a Runeblade jungler. Kindred is still pretty strong. Surprised no team has pulled out Kindred yet, actually. I feel it's a champion that has a lot of potential coming in right now. <clears throat> oh, by the way, slightly kind of, I guess, funny story about uh, Regicide's team, uh, mm -hmm. Team Royal Luck. It's that, um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I'm kind of friends with him, I guess. Um, you know, we met on solo queue for some random reason. So, you know, we talk about the tournament, how we did what each other's strategies and everything. And um, he's told me recently that he's had new members. So basically the team that he has, aside, like the team that he has right now, like most of them weren't there initially. <clears throat> so basically the team that he's playing with today, it's almost an entirely new team. And I'm mentioning this because like I asked him, how is that possible? And he said, oh yeah, like our jungler, the, you know, like, you know, his jungler's his jungler's, the original jungler's name was Nande. Right. But the guy, he went all the way to London to pursue a woman. <laughs> Wait, what? Like, I was like, really? Are you serious? He's like, hey, yes, hey, yes. So, basically, you know, with the permission of the admins, they were able to pick up US Economy, who I was also told that was part of his team from last season, which is, I guess, you know, maybe it might work again, it might not work, but yeah, it's a small little tidbit. So, for guys who, you know, if you see them playing, if they're a little out of sync, and, you know, if they don't, if they kind of seem a little like it's sluggish in this game just keep in mind that it's basically a brand new team this is a brand new team i remember i believe last season um ridge size team was eliminated by evie's team i think by team Sai in the playoffs so i know for a fact that both of those teams really want to make it to the finals because that's the only time in which they would meet um but that's definitely a long ways down the road but i'm going to be really excited to see if we can get that rematch because it's always great to play in the finals especially in the finals uh, the team that eliminated you the last time. But it looks like in a few moments here, we're going to be getting into the loading screen and then onto the Rift. But once again, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the first match of the day. We have a second best of three coming live after this one. Um, and here we go into the loading screen. But it is going to be on the blue side. It's going to be Team Royal Luck. That is going to be... Uh, if my <laughs> loading screen, apologies, folks, would uh, hurry up. It's going to be... Uh, is that Jewfish in the top lane? Correct? Uh, jungle, Yours Economy, Mid Lane, Alpha Ellie, AD Carry, Regisai, and Support, A Little Favor. And on the red side is going to be hashtag Krug Life. I actually love that name. That's one of my favorite names that uh, I've seen people come up with. You know, we have straight to... out of Grompton and Krug Life. You know, it's <laughs> uh, pretty interesting. Absolutely. It is going to be Miss Papaya in the top lane of the jungle. M Star going to be looking to see if she can make or see if he can make that impact on the Diana. I'm a little skeptical of myself. Not going to lie, but we're going to see how we can do in the mid lane. It's going to be the captain, the anomaly. In the uh, AD carry position, arrows and not support kid Twix running ignite on the thresh, as opposed to the typical exhaust. So I'm curious to see just how dominating that lane can be. Um, in the early game, they do do quite a bit of damage. Thresh vein, of course, Braum, one of the best early game supports as well. So really interested to see how the power curve for those two lanes match up. Because in the top lane, I would expect Jewfish just to more or less be able to control the lane as Malphite can just only really farm and not doing a whole lot before 3-6. And then, uh, how do you guys feel about this mid lane? I play a lot of Lissandra myself. And not taking Ignite means you're going to forfeit a lot of lane pressure in exchange for your global presence. So I would think Anomaly is really looking to either make plays top or mid or bot. Um, but he has to be very careful about uh, running into the 1v1 with Alpha Ellie. Now see, with the double teleport uses, because we saw um, Young Bronze run the double teleport as well. If there's one thing I feel that teams need to be aware of with double teleport is that if you have a composition running double teleport, you have to look for split pushing. You want What you want to do is that you want to split push, break up the whole entire enemy team, and then whoever is alone or whoever isn't grouped up the rest of their team, you just pick them all because you can pick the fight and out rotate them with the double teleport. And you have Lissandra and Malphite, some of the two best champions for making picks with. So I feel that if you're going to run double teleport, you need to make sure you know how to split push really well with it in the mid game. Because obviously, if you're using it early game, you know, it's all about TP into outer bot lane to try and force a fight or TP the top, maybe even, or maybe even a TP the mid. But in the mid to late game, we see people not utilizing the split push aspect of teleport as officially as they could have been. I'll be looking at the mid matchup mainly because here's the thing alpha ellie he he's a he's a mid player and he's on one of his comfort champions which is ari and i took a look at anomaly anomaly isn't really a mid like a mid player like you know if you, if you check him out you can kind of see that he's more comfortable on adc but it's already but that's already occupied by arrows so if if alpha ellie can dominate this lane, just get solo kills, force the jungler, force everyone to keep coming to mid, then Team Royal out there, it's gonna be a smooth sailing for them because they have to, have to waste so much resources on trying to contain Ari and trying to babysit Anomaly, who only has a teleport, then yeah, I don't see them really winning this game since, you know, mid's gonna win. But, you know, if Anomaly can hang on, farm, make plays around the map, and teleport and everything, then uh, it's it's pretty much their game to lose it. So yeah, I'm gonna be watching mid. A little, um, something I find kind of interesting here. Look at the top lane buys. We got a Corrupting Potion for the Rumble and a Refillable Potion Boots of Speed for the mouth fight. You guys got any comments on that? Because I'm a little, I'm a little intrigued by that decision. That's you know, I always assumed that Corrupting Potion was better for mouth fighters because you want that sustain for both his HP and the mana on him. Uh -huh. And I don't know about Corrupting Potion on Rumble because I can only assume he got it just so that he can just cheese with the flame spitter damage and it'll just let him do a little bit of damage. Now, see, this is a level two against a level one, oh, so this looks like it's gonna be a potential kill for them unless flashing he'll get used. With he does get used in a flash, and that's first blood for arrows right there. As Yusuke Kami is coming down, he has the red buff ticking, but there is no flash on the vein and two stacks of quick custom blows with a three stack, and they gets the auto attack for a proc on the stun. And that was very good. Used to kind of actually didn't even have to flash to secure that one too, because Bane had used his flash prior. So that's the little thing about bot lane training right there, folks. Where if the enemy bot lane hits level two, whoa, oh, 
Are you guys? Are you, Hey, did you guys see that too? Is he stuck? Uh, is he, did, you wait, see, is he stuck? Wait, wait, I wait. think that was the bug with Rex Riot? slash Tunnel where you Riot? don't tunnel over. Right? Team? <laughs> it's, oh, the flash oh. over the queue with the uh, charm and couldn't quite secure it. But you have Diana and the Malphite looking to uh, try to secure this kill right here on Alpha. But the Rumble is about to come back. It has a lot of damage to the Flamester, but. They know he's coming, so they just back off for now. But uh, I think that's the bug with Rexas Tunnel, where if you try to tunnel over, sometimes it fails. It's very rare that it happens, actually, but it does happen. I have a friend that's a Rexas, and he complains whenever it happens to him. Um, as you guys could see a few minutes ago, when uh, Army was trying to make a play on Diana, if their team was a little more, I guess, in sync, and if they were playing a little more, then Rumble should have already been coming, you know, coming, you know, coming to that side. Trying to help him out with any potential, you know, I guess assistance from either Malphite or Lissandra, but you know, since it's still kind of a new team, they're playing solo Q-ish right now. I mean, where well that is true. He also had taken into account that Malphite had boosted speed, so he was gonna get there faster than Rumble anyways. Just off of move movement speed alone. Um, something to, to talk about, we mentioned the difference in the summoner spells between Lissandra and Ari. That's the power, though, of taking Ignite, right? Lissandra cannot follow Ari, so Alpha Ellie can go wherever he wants because the Lissandra just straight up, at least until level 6, cannot follow, right? Because yeah. just the Ignite, you'll win the 1v1, just hands down, 100%, because you have the extra combat summoner. So that allowed Alpha Ellie to get the deep ward and the vision into M Star's jungle and catch him out and force his flash. Granted, he, uh, Alpha Ellie had to use Ignite to do so, uh, and flash actually, but it still set back M Star a lot. And we talk about this a lot, especially for all of you solo queue heroes. Diana Jungle always wants to just rush to level six because that's when you can finally start ganking. And Ooh, whoop, that hook! Oh shit! Haunted hook! Curving the wall! No what? We just side taking a lot of damage. I don't think he's gonna be dropping though. It's gonna be very close. Arrow's almost willing to take the tower shot. No! Oh, he auto has the tower instead! Oh, that's a good buy. R.I.P. Oh, R. I. but it's an execute oh, though, unfortunately. That is a kill going over to a little favor on arrows. That is sad boys time, so. Oh. Just for the record, everyone, there is a button in the game that's the only target champions when you have it locked down. In case you don't know what that button is, you uh on your keyboard, there's a squiggly line next to the one button. You hold down the squiggly line so that you only target champions. Another thing is if you um if you just right click the champion and then flash, it'll it'll put you in the range and then you'll just auto. So you don't have to Yeah, that listen. too. Um but Unfortunate play, Regisai also unfortunate, didn't even get the kill credit, just an execute. So I, I guess, you know, executing is better than feeding, right? So, yeah, you know, it's, you know, he, he tried, you know, he tried to, he tried, to make the big play. <laughs> you know, his, so, his, his A carry kind of died, but he tried, you know, he's a real carry. There you go. Um, Alan, what do, you, what do you think about this? Uh, we're seeing the shard uh, rush out of vein, so I'm thinking it's going to be the typical, what we're seeing right now being typical shiv, uh, what is it, Rapid Fire Cannon? What do you think about that build on Rain? Hmm, uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, my, me personally, I don't like Shiv anymore. Only because they nerfed it. So, like... Oh, we have a gank coming like, out right here in the Rumble. Oh. Does, ha does have flash, but he puts down the Equalizer. And he does flash, but I don't oh, think... Oh, is not six. So he gets out of life. Wow. Yeah. Very close. You can, uh, get thing out. All right, well, so let's see. Right now, Vayne is... I would say Vayne is still ahead in the lane because she still has that kill and she's... She, she's going to be ahead in CS because the wave right now looks like it's pushing towards her. So... But then, honestly though, personally, I don't like Static Shiv on any ADC nowadays because Static Shiv is basically admitting that you just want to go for wave clears and, at the, and the magic damage that you get from champions in team fights it got lowered. Because you know it got all overpowered from you know from being the combination of long range cannon along with static shift. So personally, I don't like static shift rushes because it just gives you, I guess you know a small boost or a small bump, you know a small power spike for team fights, and it I guess it expands to four other targets if you can hit them. But uh, I mean, but then again nowadays, uh, you know Blade of the Ruin King got nerfed. So, hmm, for Vayne, I would say, go Ghost is build. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Ghost is build. Oh, but yeah, speaking of build, Pastor Vayne, this uh, 
The one thing about the shift build pop is that it makes her lane phase much, much weaker because she doesn't have any sustain. And as you can see, the double up damage from the misfortune, if the lane gets hit by it, is very real. And we have the 2v1 happening right here as the Thresh is looking to come up, but I don't think he'll be able to make it in time as the Ignite is just ticking down. There's flash being used, but there is a Spirit Rush, and the flash from the Ari, he able to secure that kill for Alpha Ellie. Nice catch. Could, could Anomaly have saved him if he had taken the, the E? And, and rooted? Uh, probably not because there was the flash being used right there. Rex, I uh, also had access to flash too. Fair enough. But and that that's gonna be the dragon going right. over to Royal Luck off of that too with the jungler death. You know, as you can see, uh, Thresh and Bane can't exactly contest because, like I said, Bane isn't exactly the strongest right now. The Shiv Rush, she's very much weaker in comparison to Misfortune because, you know, the BF Sword has 40 attack damage, like, auto for auto. Misfortune is just going to win it just, like, straight up. Ooh, that hook. Nine minutes on the clock right here as we're getting into the major components of everyone's first items. Three to one, we're luck in the lead, only by about 700, though, so nothing too drastic. They do have that first dragon to their name, though. Uh, as we see, little favor getting hooked, and most well, the box does come wall. down, and he does get condemned with the ignite ticket. Nice the heal oh, the flash. does get used with Regicide trying to make the most out of this. With heal, some heal being used for arrows, and as the kill going over to Regicide, they try to follow up too much on it. And oh, we have and a oh. teleport coming down from Anomaly right here. He's looking to try to do something. He ease in forward. The exhaust stuns the Braum, but the exhaust of but a little favor goes down with the Let's ultimate go. being used onto Red's side. He flashes oh, away with the HP pot taking with the knockup onto Kid Twix. Use the Kami and Red's side barely living in this little skirmish, but Mr. Memstar is looking for a bit more as the Q misses on the Red's side. So, what we just saw there was that Jewfish uh, on the Rumble top lane was trying to teleport to get into the fight and use Equalizer. But Miss Papaya uh, used the Unstoppable Force, I believe, to interrupt it. But then, because Jewfish actually has a lead in the lane, Jewfish just turned around and killed him. So, that was the 1v1 that happened in the top lane during all that action. Meanwhile, I believe Arrows managed to flash the Glacial Fissure, but Regicide healed uh, just in time to keep a little favor alive long enough for that the turret to kill Arrows, I believe. Or do the mo most of the damage. Oh my god. You know, I like how consistent the Prailer are with their uh, ultimate names because we have a uh, Glacial Prison for, uh, if I remember Sejuani. correctly, it's uh, Sejuani. We have yeah. Glacial Fissure for Braum. Frozen Tomb, Lissandra. You know, Enchanted <laughs> Crystal Arrow for Ash. You're speaking of that. Ash is special. <laughs> Ash is and special. Ari just put a ward on the enemy red. So speaking of that, what if we had Arrows pick Ashes series? It would be Arrows Arrow as it like hits someone. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Um, the balloon. So okay, <laughs> five to two in favor of Royal Luck. Now a little bit greater, almost a thousand gold lead. So a little bit of an increase, still nothing too drastic. But we are going to be seeing, or I would like to see, just how Royal Luck continues to expand and balloon their leads. They're not really pushing in too far with Vision, although if you see US economy here isn't- Oh, we have the teleport coming in right now from oh, uh, Miss Papaya as looking for a potential target, but it just goes right for the unstoppable force on a misfortune as Anomaly comes down as well with the glacial, oh, he actually, his glacial, uh, glacial uh, frozen tomb was actually on cooldown, so he did not have access to it. Did Anomaly, Anomaly didn't even get an assist for that kill, did he? So. That's actually a waste of a roam for him, because he all he did was pick up one or two CS. But yeah, one thing to notice about the mid lane matchup, though, as you guys were talking about that before, is that since the is going for the Abyssal Scepter rush, that means that Lissandra does not have the enough burst damage to kill her, especially since she's going for the Rod of Ages build, so she's going for that scaling build. We have a fight happening right here in the 2v1 as LA misses, hits the charm, but he misses the Q, but... I don't even, oh wait, the Lantern Shield actually saves M-Star with the Frozen Tomb being used as Anomaly is looking to secure this oh. blue buff with the Rumble Equalizer coming down as they flash out of it as well, but Rumble secures the kill for Electric Harpoon and US Economy is looking to finish off Kid Tricks, but actually has a flash out oh. with the hook, lands from Kid Twist as uh, Arrows trying to kill him, couldn't quite get the syllable proc with the Condemn, oh and it's Malphite here on the mid lane with the concussive blows trying to stack on him and uh that's the end of this little fight right here as Regicide uh, opts to push bot lane so there's one thing I want to
talk about from what just happened here was that we had four people bot, so in response to that, we have Jewfish and Yusakami trying to take uh, Rip Herald, give it over to Rumble to try to push top lane. It's trying to, you know, it's trying to eject the train around. As you lost two people bot lane, you take Rip Herald. And then after that, we just have this little skirmish happening on the mid lane where it started off with Alpha trying to see if he can catch out M Star, and everyone else just starts to pull together for the skirmish for this fight. And it's really crazy to see how everyone was like communicating with each other, telling each other, oh, come in, come in. You know, we have to fight, we have to fight this. And then you see the mechanics coming out too, right? We have the flash on the Rumble equalizer as everyone, everyone is so mobile though. When you think about it, right? we have Bane's tumble, Diana's dashes, and the. Uh, was it Glacial Path on the Lissandra E? Yeah. I do have a say. Can someone please check Kid Twix to see if he's scripting? Like, holy crap. Like this, kid, this game, man. he has been landing like all the hooks that he needs to like, that he needs to land. Like holy oh. crap! Oh, and can they get the, the four stack on the Fantasia blows? Yes, they can. As a stun onto the kid Twix with anomaly oh. game charm as well. Now keep in mind the charm actually stopped them from falling up from his glacial path. Gl glacial path. <laughs> so he actually was not able to escape. That was very well played. We're seeing Alpha Ellie's mastery on one of his most comfortable champions here, performing excellently, roaming when he needs to be, catching yep. his picks, um, just being an overall nuisance and a really, really powerful mid laner coming here for Royal Luck as we see Jufish in the top lane just kind of bullying. Miss Papaya is not going to be able to do anything against this Leandri's torment. Uh, Rumble. Oh, yeah, so there's one thing to notice about Malphite matchups is that he struggles a bit against people who do the magic damage just because his passive makes him sack armor. But then it's like, okay, yeah, you're sacking armor, but speaking of armor, I don't think Kitchis has enough armor to survive this damage coming from Red's side right here. And he goes down, you know, trying to, he tried to get vision for his team, but he has to realize that as a support, sometimes you can't just be roaming alone like that. You need your team to help with, help you establish vision around the map, but. Even then, if you wanted to ward around the dragon area, you should have noticed that they were going to be there because the dragon is live. Keep in mind, you have dragon timer regardless if you had vision of it getting killed or not. So he should have just respected that enemy team was going to be there and just let them take that dragon. It's only, it's only the first dragon. See, look, it's only dragon number one. I mean, not dragon number one, dragon number two. It's dragon number two for them, so it's not, you're not losing too much. But the Rumble right. Eagle are being used to try and slow Diana, but she just dashes over it. And he, this is the first Harpoon, that's the second one, but he falls to the Lunar Blade. Okay, so I don't like what Malphite is doing right now. He, his build path is all over the place. He hasn't finished even a single item. His boosts aren't complete. I don't know what he's doing. So, I mean, so, I mean, next time if he plays Malphite again, he should at least try to complete an item before splitting off like this because it's, I don't know. And number two, uh, I'm sorry, Alpha, but uh, your your first item, your first item at Missile Scepter, it's uh, it's not ham enough. You have a huge lead, you have ignite, dude. Go for something, you know, stronger. Why well, he stronger? has a large rod now, so that is so much stronger. Come on, you have a, you know, you're gonna be killing people, and the Sandra has a teleport. Use do something else. Well, could we, we can also consider... Oh, hang on a minute. A little favor. Getting hooked again. Kid Twix, he's been getting caught out, but you have to give him credit where credit's due. This guy's landing all the hooks that he needs to be. But um, in regards to the Abyssal Scepter... Yes, yeah, he could be going something more ham, but I think it's all right. I mean, yeah, I think it's fine, too, Alpha, because when you calculate that, you yeah. get 70 ability power. I'm going to win this game. You just want a bloodbath. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Dude, just... Right, no, you know, the Ari right might potentially look for the Spear Rush, but... Can't quite get it just because uh, Lissandra still has access to the Frozen Tomb. Yeah, but here's the thing, you're on your comfort champion, you see that they have teleport, you have ignite, you're pretty much saying I'm gonna beat you one-on-one, -on -one, you know, since you have teleport, so, and you know, a business scepter just kinda says I'm a little unsure now. You should've just gave that message, like, you have to send a message to the opposing team saying, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna build any kind of resistance, I'm just gonna go full ham damage, <laughs> you guys can't win, we're gonna win the first game, just go on to, you know, just go on to match number two, let's go. Like, I, sh I would've just done that, I don't know. Well, if you look at it, it's a smart item buy considering that we have three magic damage sources coming from both for Lissandra, <laughs> Malphite, and, <laughs> and Diana. And then when you smart. consider how strong Lissandra's burst is, uh, she's going for the scaling build of gaining the Rod of Ages, but also when you take into account that Abyssal Scepter reduces 
the Emmys manages this by 20 when they're near you, and that's already kind of it. She's just kind of like goes into your face, lowers your MR, and you're probably doing potentially even more damage when you factor in the Q true damage as well. And now, having this objective tray in the mid lane and the top lane, they're training this tier 1 tower for a tier 2 tower. Now, keep in mind, they also have Rift Herald, so they're able to kill that very quickly. So, all in all, even though it is objective training, it still wasn't worth, but there's a flash. Frozen Tomb as Regicide has to flash away as well. He's looking to trade his one for one, Ooh. actually blows a summoner heal what? and lives in the 2v1 as Jewfish on the Rumble throws out the equalizer, gets the soul out. The Thunderlord's decree damage comes through as well as Regicide is healing from the critical strike damage as he has the Warlord Mastery. Rest in peace. That about sums it up. <laughs> and it's supposed to be a, a really good objective trade on the side of Royal Luck, where they trade a tier 1 tower for a tier 2 tower, and they get two kills, actually three kills out of it. No, and no, now they, they can yeah. potentially get another tier 2 tower. Although they're opting for the red buff here, 19 minutes as the siege goes on. Because they do have the repair lane. minions. Rift? Oh, that is correct. How long is the, is the buff the same duration as, uh, as Baron? I think it might be, yeah. Wow, it's lasted a long time. They are going to definitely get this turret down. So that's going to be turret number five in the favor of Royal Luck. 19 and 20, uh, 12 kills to six, about a, give or take, 7,000 gold lead. Definitely in command of this game. Alpha Ellie doing work alongside all of his landers. Registered the captain, six, two and two. Throwing down that bullet time to show that he's someone to be reckoned with as a siege on the bottom turret. He does get hooked. <laughs> Oh, and talk about the Wombo combo getting in. Kids were forced to flash away with the Ignite burning down. There's no equalizer to be found in this fight. M-Star being forced to pull away after he gets a kill onto US Economy. will get away with his life. Miss Papaya deciding, yeah, let's take out a tunnel while we're at it. Bit of a overreach on that uh, siege. What do you guys think? No, I just think that he got caught. That's about it. <laughs> So as you can see, this game is in the favor of War of Luck right here, as they're very, very smart with the objective training that they're doing. They went, as you can see, took Rift Herald, Tier 2 Tower, got three kills, took another Tier 2 Tower, and they're just, even though they lost two people right there, just because they just overstay after taking so many objectives, this game is still in their favor where they have this 5k gold lead for them. So if they can just keep their advantages and keep focused on the, getting the objectives, they'll be able to win this game and potentially look to see any of the weaknesses that they have on the side of Krug Life. Oh, but cool. right now, there's a skirmish hammer has already flashed forward, misses the second hit of the yeah. orb of the session on the vein as as Kit Twist hooks the minion, but it'll still work for Krug Life right here as the want to just push this lane down and get this tier 1 tower because they really do need a global goal to get back into this game but we have US Kami looking to engage upon them the unstoppable force is down so this looks like it could be a potential kill with the lantern saves Miss, Miss Papaya but they're still looking for more can they get the knockup but Amstar decides to turn surprisingly as his team is trying to disengage a little miscommunication right there I think he wanted to just suicide his life to trade for Jewfish but he didn't take into account uh, the US Economy's unburrow stun and that's why he lost the trade there. But let's, I actually wanted to take a moment here. Let's talk about this Diana jungle, you know? We talked about how Anomaly <laughs> is AFK in the top lane. This is why you don't AFK when you go to buy everyone. Ladies let's and gentlemen. Go, let's go. Oh, he goes for the Izzaz. Is this going to be the potential oh, the soul kill? Tomb. The Frozen Tomb does get you. How well can Anomaly <laughs> kite the flash? Q misses. He's looking, but I think he's oh, buying a little bit more than he can shoot as he gets killed by Anomaly. Gentlemen, was that was that an elaborate bait or was that a legitimate AFK? I'm not sure. <laughs> it, if uh, he, if he could have gotten the winter's bite, he could have potentially been. But you also gotta keep in mind that uh, as a matter is it's just armor and HP and Redside gets caught out right here and he's gonna go down. Still but trade. Alpha Ellie helping the trade be one for one as he can potentially get more kills. But Malphite's here he uses the unstoppable force as the play gets thrown back or the session comes out gets a little bit more move speed and US Akami is here to help as they try to look for a kill onto Kid Twix. But will this be a kill as he plays him away? And he throws off the lamp to shield just to try to keep himself safe. The charm does land on Papaya but not much more follow up damage. Uh, I think that was a misplay on, uh, on the red side rather than uh because essentially they had MF corner, she was gonna die, and they essentially forgot the Shatter ult up. I mean, if Thresh saved one of his cooldowns, or if or if Vayne saved her Condemn for even just one, just one second, they could just wait for MF to use the ult, and then just prevented her from firing, firing off everything, and just killed her without 
creating one for one. Oh, they're going for this Baron on the side of world. Oh, Look, I don't think I don't think Crowlight even knows that this is happening. They're killing a ward near the red buff, but it seems they have no vision right here as Thresh does finally put the ward over, but it seems this could be too late. Will this be a Baron for World of Luck, or will this be the stole? The, the, the teleporter comes in, and that oh. is a smite from US Economy as they secured a Baron for him with the bullet time being used as they finish off Star, and they're looking to get more as the flash being used over from Anomaly, and World of Luck has his Baron buff, and as we saw from before, whenever they have Rift Herald or Baron, they're just going to do their best to just siege yourself, and look at the enemy team composition. They have not enough way clear against Baron minions, and even if they did have way clear, it's still Baron minions. It's very hard to clear that. Anomaly is basically their only clear right now, because um, Arrow has turned out not to even go ship second, so it's basically onto all onto anom anom yeah, Anomaly here to spam that uh, Ice Shard in order to Oh, the Equalizer wow. finishing off Arrows. As World Luck looks to get an inhibitor with US Akami going a knock up onto Lissandra as Braum uses the sand aside to shield some of the damage as they get an inhibitor. Now they could potentially look to get a tier 2 tower in the side lane. But it seems they're going to be going for this uh, top lane push. Arrows is dead for 15 seconds and there is no way clear on the side of Krug Life. Let's, uh, right, so I wanted to mention this before while we have a lull, um, or maybe not that much of a lull, is Team Royal Luck deciding they don't need to back quite yet, even after getting an inhibitor in the mid lane, they want to keep sieging this top lane turn and see if they can get more. Granted, Anomaly is the only wave clear on the side of uh, Kruglite, but there's oh, yeah, stop the force. That's gonna use onto two targets with the bullet time. Just coming out, just shredding a lot of the team as a lot of follow damage because the red side does get hooked, but the, he actually cues his as he follows up here. on it, but he goes down as Arrows is trying to do something, but the minions are blocking his way. Why are the minions block his own teammate as he dashes, tumbles forward into a misfortune damage oh, along with Ari over Deception. But Red Aside is cleaning up. He gets a triple kill. Will this be the quadruple kill? The stun guests get proc. He has the red buff ticking as well, and that is nice. an ace, but the scumbag Alpha Ellie denying his AD carry the quadruple kill. It's not. It's, it's called kill secure, right? It's called kill secure. Uh, very interesting fight there, and I just have to... Where was M-Star? Where was the, the entirety of the fight? The, the majority of that fight ended by the time M-Star even got into the fray. What was going on there? A major miscommunication for sure. Oh, it seems they aren't going to attempt to stay to get the second in him. I, I felt that they could have stayed, gotten the second in him, and that even if someone died, it would have been worse because there would have been two in him down on the side of Krug Life. And even if they died with three deaths, Krug Life can't even take anything. Look at the map. They only taken two outer towers, I believe. And Dragon's yep. up in a minute and 40 seconds. Your team would have respawned before it comes back up. Okay, so let me ask you guys this then, all right? So suppose you guys are on the red side now, okay? What is your win condition at this point of the game? Like, what would you tell your team if you guys wanted to make a comeback and not FF20, what would you guys start trying to do now? You're gonna lose the five v five no matter what you do. There's yeah, no way exactly. You like the only way they can potentially, the only way they can potentially win a fair. fight is if they can somehow dive all the way onto misfortune. Because if you look at it, that is the primary source of damage over the side of Team Royal Up. But even when you think about that, the Rumble still does a lot of damage. This is a Rumble with Leandris and Abyssal Scepter. That has a lot of damage coming out of this Rumble. So even if Reddit's side still dies, there is a second damage threat on the side of Team Royal Luck. But you, I think that is the only hope that they have. Just be able to interrupt the bullet time with the Unstoppable Force and have Anomaly and Diana pile onto one target. It's it's your typical Malphite dream, right? You need the Unstoppable Force to hit both the Rumble and the uh, the MF in order to win the fight, if you want my honest opinion. If it hits off of Ellie, all the more better. But you need to hit at least those two guaranteed. Because if not, just like Ashan said, you're either going to kill you're gonna kill one damage threat, that's going to be fine. And then you're going to watch as the rest of your team melts the other one. So they only have those options. However, they can't even get into a position to do so because they have to be spread so thin with covering the super minions in the mid lane and making sure that the top lane, in, which is a bare inhibitor, mind you, is protected. As we see Anomaly up there, granted, this is the use of double te teleport is that you can make use of those summoners to always have someone in a position. Although Richard Sides is going to get ultimate. Oh, the hook is only going to hit a little favor. No one else. Richard Sides doing a lot of damage. Richard goes down. Bullet time is going to be the end of this papaya. Uh, Jufa is trying to look for a home guard, I believe. 
Uh, Equalizer not gonna find it, but the job is done. Inner turret bot lane goes down. 27 minutes. The seed goes on into the bot lane inhibitor turret. 22 to 13. US economy taking up a bit of the turret here as Jewfish gets hooked, but I don't think these boys are from uh, word at all. As Arrows just jumped up at the US economy. The Titanic Hydra doing so much damage. Arrows forced to go back. Kitswakes cannot land the hook. Inhibitor turret is down. This is gonna be a bare inhibitor and a free one at that. It is, uh, there's no possible way I see Krug Life winning. But Pi is there in the next 10 seconds, and even if he does respawn, Unstoppable Force is still on cooldown. This is gonna be a three inhibitor take, and we're gonna see if Royal Luck can just pull the trigger. I honestly think they can end the game here. Unstoppable Force is still about 20 or so seconds away. And normally with the flash trying to make a play, but just I know he knows he's the target, does not have QSS, so he wants to step away. US economy getting low. Kids are trying to trap him with the boss, not get it. Contestant blows will be parking on him shortly. Mr. Fire tanking up once again. Again, no one's up force on this mouth fight. And normally will be the first. Casualty of this fight, Kitswick landed hook on the Jewfish, Arrows, Regicide going for the AD carry, battle, force, force the flash away. Oh my lord, that rumble damage. Doing the most damage, there's the second bullet time of the siege, and that is going to be the almost complete ace. Here's Economy trying to track that down, that one last kill. He's going <laughs> to there's the ace, Royal Luck in 30 more or less minutes ending this game. So I think we should start talking about this game because we clearly see that it's going to be over and it's going to be the win going over to Team Royal Luck. So how do you feel about this Malphite build, guys? Because you see he's fighting against a lot of magic damage and a lot of physical damage. And as you see right here, he does not have a finished MR item. Just has a Spectre's Cal, but doesn't have a Banshee's Belt or a Visage. How do you guys feel about these itemization build paths right bad. here? Very, very bad. Because, like you said, uh, he was he was against the Rumble, so he should have built a lot more MR. And his CS is really subpar. I mean, I. But no, but one thing is, is that they did engage. Like he did engage upon the MF. Just like you know, you guys said, if they are able to somehow get a pick on the MF, then they'll be able to win. He got in onto the MF at the last team fight, but no one else followed. So, yeah, but no damage, no MR, just. One completed item. Eh. The glacial shot, I feel, was what vexed him the most, just because um, he completed that. I believe he completed that item first, or maybe he 